Hello, and welcome to a VO's Journey podcast. My name is Anthony Pika, and this show is all about helping the new and upcoming voice of artists grow their business, sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. I'm super thrilled to be coming to you. It is June 21st, Tuesday. We are going to be talking about how you can get more voiceover work by becoming a better voice actor. And we're going to talk about some tips and tricks that you can do that, all right? Let's do it. This is VO's Journey. With your host, the incomparable Anthony Pika. All right. So I am thrilled to be talking to you about this topic today. It, it's been a hot minute since I've done a podcast, but I am back and super excited to be talking to you about this because, you know, in Avio's Journey Elite Academy, we have our monthly audition challenges. And last month's challenge was uh, to win a free demo. And uh, we've, we had, you know, we've got so many, <laughs> I think I've listened to 90 some auditions so far, I'm a little behind, but it's, uh, it's wonderful. We've got so many talented people and, but you know, one cool thing about being able to listen to auditions as a voice actor myself, on top of being a coach, you know, and, 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 and running the Academy. And now, you know, since we've launched the audiobook production company as well, it really is beneficial to hear such a wide variety of auditions and what people are doing, what they're not doing, how they sound, maybe how they think they sound compared to what they really sound like. Also, their production quality. When I put out the auditions, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I did a poor job of actually saying, hey, this is what I'm looking for. But if you think about it, that's kind of our life <laughs> as voice actors. We don't get a lot of information sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time, we get a bare minimum uh, of information. But what I found was, was that, you know, there was a lot of good to decent acting. There was, uh, there's been, you know, some acting that needs some more work. There's also, but a, mo a lot of it was production issues. And what I mean by production issues was technical, technical hiccups in the audio, like not taking care of pops or sibilance. Or there was extra breaths that were in your audio. Now, remember, breaths are not bad. And I think we all realize that breaths are not bad. They're a part of being natural. And in long-form narration, it's, it's odd not to have breaths. However, when you are auditioning, especially for something short, like a commercial, like a short-form commercial or something, I do think it makes a lot of sense not to have breaths in your auditions because it takes away from the suspension of disbelief. I've talked about that. The suspension of disbelief is the idea that when we are narrating, when we are telling a story, when we're performing, the listener, we, we take them on a journey and they suspend their disbelief that it's make-believe. OK, that it's made up, that this made up scenario, this life, this dream, this story that we're telling, they suspend that disbelief to go on that journey with us. Even if it's 15 seconds or it's 10 hours, our job is to maintain that illusion for them. And there are some things with our acting and production. And one of those things is breaths if they're not done correctly. So. And, and all those other things, mouth noise, clicks, you know, um, the kind of noise, right? When we're talking, we all have it as voice actors uh, and and or background noise. Some people I was hearing background noise, uh, you know, and and I don't mean like 
loud room tone. I mean, actually something going on in the background. So it's, it's, it's really one of those situations where we have so many different avenues as voice actors to tackle that it's so vital that we get some things down right off the bat. Now, I wanted to talk about acting today, but again, I brought up the production side because it's so vital to your success that your production, the you know, the 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 overall editing, mixing, mastering is on point. So many people sounded like the EQ we we need so so we need work on you know mixing or the EQ some high ends there was a lot of muffled sounds there was a lot of and I don't know is over compression and listen this is why we're doing these things so that we're you know I wrote feedback for everybody and and I still have way more auditions to do you know to listen to but I'm writing feedback and this is good stuff because you know if you don't have someone I think who can give you feedback. That's a a big that's a big hurdle to overcome. So the first thing that you have to do becoming a better voice actor, you know, becoming a better actor in general and becoming a better producer, because let's face it, we are all producers. All right. And I when I say I would say we're all technicians, you know, and we do produce our own work. Let's be honest. But, you know, we're all technicians as well. So the first thing that you've got to do to be better is you need to get a second pair of ears, a third pair. You need to get either with a community, um, join the academy, uh, join a, a very active and kind Facebook group, like a VO's journey. <laughs> I'm, I'm plugging everything in this podcast. But, you know, join, get get ears, you know, find a coach and get feedback on your work. Because as we, you know, a lot of us don't even like to listen to how our voices sound when we're narrating. So, you know, how are we supposed to be the the over the all out judge? It's nice to get some feedback. So that's the first thing. You've got to find a place that you can bounce things off of people, off of someone. And by the way, on a side note, this is important. Make sure that whoever you choose, whether you have an accountability partner, whether you've got a coach. Whether you know, and hopefully a coach, you know, that's that's a given, but you want to find people who know what they're talking about and are going to steer you in the right direction and not give you advice that is going to hurt you. And the hard part is, especially when you're beginning or you're just you're trying to get advice, you know, sometimes the most costly advice is free advice. And it's not out of malice. I think a lot of times people think, you know. When someone says the most costly advice is free advice, they're thinking that, you know, someone is maliciously, uh, maliciously hurting them. And I, that's just not true. I think that I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting a, <laughs> a drink of Mountain Dew here. I, it's not true. It's not malicious. It's that, you know, would you go to work with a doctor who or a person who it's like those commercials, right? Where that what is it? That woman who falls down in the middle of a restaurant and a woman runs over to her and she gets down and she's like, I need this and this, that. And they're like, you're a doctor. She's like, no, I just stayed at a Best Western last night. You know, those commercials. Well, you know, you you wouldn't take that advice very seriously when they're not a trained professional. But a lot of times, especially in groups or things, we post our stuff and we ask for advice and good meaning Good nature, good kind people, other voice actors who are really just trying to help, will give advice, and they're 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 not trying again. They're not trying to be malicious or trying to hurt you, but they might not have had twenty years of coaching or training or acting experience or judging experience or casting experience. You know, they might not have a, a you know, a, a, a bachelor's or master's degree in performing arts, all these things that a person trains under. Now, do you need all those things? Of course not. But at the same time, what I'm trying to say to you is, is that you've got to be careful. I've seen a lot of advice given out of the kindness of people's hearts that would not be the same advice I would give 
just because I know that that doesn't necessarily work or that's not maybe the best advice for someone in a specific stage in their career, right? So it's just important to make sure the people that you listen to and the people you find to listen to your work are people who are doing what you want to do and have that experience, you know, that have worked with lots of people. I mean, one thing I can tell you that has benefited me in helping other people is now that I've worked with so many voice actors and, and I continue to work with so many voice actors, uh, it is a blessing because I get to see and listen to so many different voices and styles. I get to see what's working, what's not working. You know, I get to relay that information to other people. You know, there's there's a lot of experience that and knowledge that comes from continuing, you know, continual um, exposure, right? So, so it's just something to think about. So that's the first thing. All right. The second thing is that it become a student of the acting part of voiceover. And what I mean by become a student today, I posted a video on YouTube about conversational style voice acting. And in that video, I talked about, you should check it out. By the way, <laughs> it's on the YouTube channel, the Navio's Journey YouTube channel. But in the video, you know, I I talked about what conversational tone or style, what it really means, you know, because I think when when most of us, you know, that that idea of oh well, you need to be more conversational, it sounds so benign, right? It sounds so easy, or it's just supposed to be like, come on, it's conversational. We all should be able to just be conversational. But that's so um, that that couldn't be, I think, farther from the truth of what conversational means. And and I submitted that conversational voice acting is about convincing someone that you really believe something through the way through the um, with the emotion that the client has has asked you to to relay. Right. So if the client asks you, you know, I want you to be happy and excited about a product that you've never had, you've never seen, you've never experienced, you've never purchased, you've never used, you don't know anybody who has it, you have no idea about this, but they want you to be excited and they want you to realistically make me believe that you as an individual wholeheartedly love it, own it, recommend it with excitement. That's that's hard. That's acting. That's upper level high skill performance. And that performance has to be you have to train yourself. And I also submitted in that video that these types of performances that we're asked to give and and be conversational often are paired with words like be yourself or you know, find your own voice, right? Well, I I think that's very misleading because being being yourself, being conversational, none of us go around acting like talking to people, being excited and upbeat uh, about you know a, a a product that we're having a conversation with our with our with our spouse about. We're we're not we don't we don't go around to our friends and try to sell them stuff. I don't you know that whole thing came out about you know the next door neighbor. I don't go to my next door neighbor and start selling him a a, a a lawnmower. I don't. I mean, we might talk about the lawnmower being cool, and that's what has been claimed to be what people want you to perform like. But the reality is, is that the majority of us we do not have those sensitivities built into our repertoire like we don't go around doing this okay and because of that we have to realize that our job is to create new characters of ourselves different i need to have multiple characters of anthony with different uh you know different um uh, uh, emotions, different deliveries, different feelings, different outlooks. And I need to be able to express that when it's called upon, which means I need to start building through 
repetition and practice and coaching, I need to build different voiceover products. I, I've said that multiple times and I use the word product. I use the word um, uh, characters here as a way to differentiate different emotional deliveries, different you know styles to uh, deliver a message. So I, so this idea of just conversational voice acting, you got to be conversational, is very misleading. There's so much more to it. Same thing goes into authoritative. Okay, there are different tones that we as as we as actors, voice actors, uh, attach ourselves to. But within those tones, there's so much depth and versatility that can come along with them, and different points of view that still can be authoritative or conversational, you know, or um, upbeat or funny or sad or emotional, you know, um, or uh, um, matter of fact, you know, um, so, so because of that, we have to practice these different types and to practice, we've got to identify. So part of the next thing that you need to do is be able to identify different styles of voice acting. Now, for a long time, or I, I trained for a long time as a stage actor and then as a director, and I, I've directed hundreds of plays. And um, it really, being an actor on the stage, you get to use so much more than just your voice. You're using your body. You're using your facial expression expressions because we as people use all of those things to express ourselves, right? And we as people see so much more, right? They say they say visually when you're talking to someone, you're watching someone, if you can see them, the majority of what they say is not through their words, it's through their physical um, you know, their physical motions or what's not said, right? Or their facial expressions, their their physical expression. Um and as voice actors, we don't have that luxury. So, however, here's the thing. It is very evident that, for example, when you smile, all right, so right now I'm smiling. And you could probably tell, because now I'm giggling, you could probably tell that I'm smiling, okay? And I really, and, and I was forcing myself, and now I'm not, right? I was forcing myself to smile. You could hear it. I could hear it. I could hear the difference in my voice, all right. Same thing if I decide to hunch over and I decide to talk like this. So my my shoulders are hunched over. My neck is down. Uh, I'm trying to keep my head up just a little bit so the microphone picks me up. But you get this. Now I'm, I'm, I'm sitting back up straight. You can tell the difference in just the change. It was still me. But I was relaying a different feeling about the words I was saying from just my posture. Even though you could not see it, you could hear it. So there is such a physical nature to even voice acting that so many of us um, don't get any training on. And I'm going to be doing a lot more training. I'm going to be doing a lot more bringing uh, actual acting skills and training to the academy and doing more deep dives even into acting coaches. You know, people like Meisner uh, and Adler and people like um, uh, Uta Hagen and, you know, um, even with the method and different styles like that. But there's there's also improv. I find improvisation is such a powerful tool, especially for voice actors, because improvisation allows us to let go. All right, we have to force ourselves to let go. And what's really exciting about improvisation is a lot of times with improvisation, you'll notice that people actually end up being more real. Okay, they they end up being more real with their characters through improvisation because their focus is not on how they, you know, air quote sign or sound, right? Their 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 focus is thinking, you know, what's coming next. 
What am I reacting to? You know, and that's, you know, they, that old saying, acting is reacting. I think there's a lot of those sayings. Acting is imitation. Drama is heightened life. There is a heightened nature to what we do. But at the same time, improv really gives a good, a good approximation for us. Because if you think about it, we really do improv emotion. We do not get to practice this uh, method style of voice acting in some senses where time is spent retrieving emotion from past experiences to where then we can use transference to bring it out in an outward expression. You know, we, you, we, we, what we call transference is this idea that, you know, like if you, if you broke up with a boyfriend or girlfriend a long time ago, all right, or, or not so long ago, but anyways, you, you have a, a breakup with someone or a divorce or whatever, you take those feelings of despair or hurt, sometimes it could be happiness, but you know what I mean? We take these feelings of, of frustration, sadness, and anger, and we transfer them into another situation that we are performing in, okay? So we can approximate, we can imitate that emotion because we've experienced it. But using a method style of acting, it's an actor's, uh, uh, it's, it's an actor's uh, journey, okay, to find real expression through past experiences. And that's where the transference comes in. OK, so as a voice actor, we're asked, though, to do it within a few minutes. <laughs> we're given a script and we're like, you know, read it through. Go. <laughs> and, and you've got to be able to bring that out without having all of that time. So that's why I think that it's so vital for us to come into voice voice acting from a place of. I have specific styles, methods, and even references. If I have to go back and listen to something real quick to jog my memory about how something sounds for me to deliver. And that's why you have people who really begin to uh, go off into specific niches because they get very good at you know one or two type deliveries. But these days, because of the speed of the work and the change in the environment with costs, the cost differential uh, differential for us of how high paying and low paying jobs are, we've got to be uh, a lot of places and we've got to be able to do a lot of things in order to make this a viable career these days. So this idea about voice acting, training yourself, getting coaching, working with people who know what they're talking about, so important for your success. And the last thing I'm going to say about that is if you get a coach, if you, you know, and, and, and yeah, you work with me or, or somebody else, whoever you work with, whatever you do, <laughs> just try to listen, you know, do, go out on a limb and listen to what they say. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and try it. Always be willing to try is what I'm trying, what I'm trying to get at. Um, but listen, uh, I, I hope that this podcast at least has sparked some interest or some thought about, you know, hey, there's so much into this acting. People spend their lifetimes. It is a worthy pursuit, right? It is a journey inward to be able to discover who we really are and then how we can relay those messages. But here's the rub. No matter how old you are, whether you're starting out and you're in your early 20s or you're in your 70s or 80s, no matter where you are on the age scale, that doesn't mean that you've necessarily figured everything out. I mean, I think it would be naive for any of us to say, even on our deathbed, we figured it all out. <laughs> There's no way in the world we could figure it all out, which means that this pursuit of figuring out new parts of us, new ways to express our our thoughts, our emotions, our love, our passion, that's going to come over time with us actively exploring it. But first, we've got to make ourselves aware of it. And hopefully this podcast has done that, made you aware of this incredible life. And, and I need to do, listen, I, 
I'm, I need to do a lot more of this. For so long, I've preached about marketing and it's so vital to this, to, to your success. It's, 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 it's everything. It really is. But marketing without being able to perform, without being able to act, uh, having high quality performance is useless. And, and the same thing, right? Voice acting, high quality performance without marketing is nothing. And I think so much of the time I've spent over the last few years, most of it has always been around marketing and not as much around acting. And I think for me, I've been able to do that personally because I've trained my whole life in, in the theater and, uh, you know, and, and, and coached and directed and been a part of that world for 20, 25 plus years now. And I think it's easy for someone who's done that their whole life now, my whole adult life, and going back to, I, you know, I started when I was in school, in um, uh, uh, middle school, into, L, into high school, into college, and then professionally, and then I, and then I became a, a director and et cetera. Um, it's easy to overlook what that's like for people who have not had that, that life experience. And, you know, that's something that I'm going to be doing a lot more of is is working through that and training people on being hardcore performers because that acting will help you win. And then on top of that, the marketing side helps you stand out. So there's two components, right? The acting side helps you deliver an incredible performance. All right, that moves people, that relays a message that means something, you know, even if it's a 15 second spot about chocolate candy, who cares? It's still a message that you relay powerfully. Okay. But there's the marketing side that also allows you to stand out to get attention. You have to do both because without getting that attention, you can't do that performance. But without that performance, it doesn't matter how much attention you get. They've got to go hand in hand. So I'm going to start focusing also a lot more on this acting, just like this podcast. Uh, thank you guys so much. Make sure you head over and watch that video. I think you'll like it at the YouTube channel. And also check out the Academy, bringing a lot more of this. I'm really excited moving forward. Also, we've started the audiobook production company where we're going to be training and, and publishing audiobooks with people from the Academy. So excited about that. Um, and yes, they are, they are. you are being paid. Um, <laughs> you will be paid for those. So, um, yeah, give it a check out. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope this was helpful and until next time, best of luck and go get some business. <laughs> All right, everybody talk to you later. Peace.